1976, the Flint Tropics were last in the league until they signed a new player coach, Ed Monix, to, to, to come to the team and turn the team around. Monix came from Boston Celtics, who had previously won a championship. The team struggled to find success until they heard that the ABA would be merging with the NBA, and it was said that the top four teams in the ABA would be merging into the NBA. The Tropics, with their new coach and leader, Monix, and star player, downtown funky stuff, Malone, managed to make it all the way back to fourth place, despite the league having very low expectations and multiple abysmal seasons before this. The league decided, however, that the four teams with the largest markets would be merging to the NBA instead. Despite all their efforts, the hope to make it to the NBA for the Tropics was over. However, they had one final game in the season, and they took all their pride and left it on the court in the Mega Bowl, where they beat the best team in the league, the San Antonio Spurs. This was a massive achievement for the franchise's last season, and it all became a reality thanks to the addition of one player who was able to step in and be a leader amongst a group of boneheads. <laughs> of course, none of this was real. Rather, it was the plot of a comedy movie, Semi-Pro. If you don't know anything about me, my life revolves around mainly two things, volleyball and movies. Through my years of volleyball, I've seen myself grow, of course, as a player, but I've found that more importantly, I've grown as a leader, something that I believe is one of the most important traits for a person to have. I know that some people would rather stay in the dark and be a follower, or they don't believe they're good enough at anything to be a leader in it. But being a leader doesn't require either of those qualities. There's a system called the 10-80-10 system. It says that the top 10% of people in any given sport or job are the leaders, and the ones at the front of the pack who need to be role models and do the right things all the time for the middle 80%. The middle 80% are the people who aren't necessarily the most extroverted, or they just want to be followers, who, who do what they're asked, and who make the engine of any team or work group run. Then there's the bottom 10% of people who don't pull their weight, they slow the ship down, and those are the people who need to be eliminated from the team if you want to work at the highest capacity. The message I'm trying to send is to not be in the bottom 10%. Even if you don't see yourself as a leader or a top 10%, if you find yourself in the 80%, you're a leader. A leader for those who look up to you, because there will always be people who look up to you if you're in the 80. And in my years of playing volleyball, I always found myself in the 8%. I felt like I was doing what needed to be done while my brother Kyle was in the top 10%. And he would push me every day and drag me along to the gym even when I begged him not to go. And now after all the hard work inspired by him, I find myself in that position that my brother was in. He guided me to become a leader, and since I stayed in the 8% and never allowed myself to dip into the bottom 10, I found success. Now my goal as a senior and as someone who have people looking up to me, I've made it my goal to push those in the 80% to be better each and every day. And to my fellow seniors and general community, even if you don't feel like it now, you have or will have people who will look up to you. And it's your job to be a leader, to push those younger than you or who aren't as confident as you to be better each and every day. Because no matter the person in any regard, whether it's sports or in the classroom or just at home, you are in the top 10% of something. And you have to be a leader for those looking up to you. Ed Monix did it with the Flint Tropics, and my brother did it with me. So seek out to be a leader in whatever it is you're doing. Because the group with the most skill isn't always the best. The group with the best chemistry and the best leaders will be the most successful. Now for thank yous. I want to thank all the friends I've made over the years. Thank you to my coaches for turning me into the player I am today. Thank you to Grandma Karen and Grandpa Ron for everything you do, watching our dogs while we're away and all the fun bar dice we play at your house. Thank you to Papa for giving me so many amazing things uh, between the trips to Hawaii or the condo in Aspen. Thank you to Grandma Pat for being the best grandma and always bringing your cookies or brownies or peanut butter squares to our house and just being the best grandma ever. Thank you to my little brothers, Colby and Kellen, for being the people I can always pick on so that I don't have to do it at school and get in trouble. Thank you to Kyle for being my best friend for my whole life, practically, doing everything with me, being the main person who always pushed me and make me do extra work all the time, always making me do mobility in the basement or find, find a way to work out over COVID, always willing to go into the gym and set me and make me better. Thank you to my dad for being such a hard worker all the time, working multiple jobs and then coming home and doing whatever housework had to be done. And thank you to my mom for being the most supportive mom of all time, driving all four of us around to different sports, probably being one of the busiest people I know, but always being there for us and taking care of us when we're sick, even though you know you're going to get sick from it. Thanks for coming to all our huge tournaments across the country, practically having to stay in the gym all day, every day, watching us when one of us would play in the morning and one of us would play at night, and for filming our, all our games so we would have footage to send out to highlight for highlight reels. And thank you for just being the best mom ever. Thank you.